Over the years, I've done many different videos talking about the concept of tokenization and tokenism in comic books. And though I've defined it many times, there are a lot of stupid, disingenuous people that attempt to straw man the position. So I figured I'd do a dedicated video explaining what exactly it is and the issues that stem from it. Instead of going back and forth with some brainlet in the comment section, just send them this video and call it a day. There wasn't even a Webster's Dictionary entry for tokenism when I first started using it in videos. I do not care what you personally think that it is or that you think I should use a different term. Not important. So let me define tokenism first and foremost in this context. Tokenism is the gender, race, or sexuality change of a pre-established character. We call this tokenism because it's usually only done one direction and it's purposeful and with intent. Once that tokenism occurs, we call that manifestation a tokenization and it doesn't matter if there's a supposed mantle at play. There is some sort of unoriginality with every tokenization, but not all unoriginal characters are tokenized. We'll also address that in a bit. I almost exclusively talk about tokenization in the comic book space. As mentioned, this happens in a couple of different ways. Most notably are female versions of classically male characters. Carl zor aka Supergirl, would be considered a tokenized version of Superman because, as implied by the name, she was created to be a female version of the already established male character. So characters like Spider-Woman, Batgirl, Batwoman, Miss Marvel are all examples of tokenized characters, but please keep in mind that not all tokenizations require them to have female slants, it's just most of them do. Likewise, not all characters with similar names are tokenized, though this is a rare instance. For example, there was a character named Falcon before the black one for Marvel Comics. There's also Monica Rambeau who first went by the name Captain Marvel, but neither of those characters are in any way connected to nor are they based on the characters they share names with. The second way this happens, which is most prominent these days, would be the tokenism that takes place when the character is depicted outside of the original work, such as like animation and the live action depiction of comic books. As an example, Jimmy Olsen, who is white in the comics, is played by some bald black guy in the Supergirl show, Iris West who is a white redhead in the comics is played by a black woman in the Flash show. The upcoming depictions of Tim Drake in Cyclone for DC's live action movies and series is Miles Morales, a tokenized character. Yes, he's Puerto Rican and black Spider-Man and was created to be exactly that. The creators are pretty open with their intention in his creation and though he has a couple of power changes, he's largely based off Peter Parker. Is Black Panther a tokenized character. No, he's an original black character. What about Jason Todd being Robin? Is he tokenized? No, Dick Grayson, the first Robin, same race, gender, and sexuality. Now, when Stephanie Brown becomes Robin, you can make the argument that she's a tokenized Robin, but when she was spoiler, she would be more original, non-tokenized character. What about Nick Fury in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? You like Sam Jackson so much, he can't be tokenized. Yes, he absolutely is as the first and original Nick Fury was a white guy. Marvel even tried to bring the black Nick Fury into the main comic universe and they tried to explain this by saying that he's the black son of the original Nick Fury. Yeah, yeah go look it up, it doesn't make any sense. Now Falcon. He was an original black character as Falcon, but Sam Wilson becomes a victim of tokenism when Marvel decided to give him Steve Sloppy Seconds and had him become Captain America. Is Barry Allen or Wally West tokenized? No, they're not the original Flash, meaning they can be considered some sort of knockoff, but they are white, male, and straight, just like Jay Garrick. Is the black Wally West tokenization? Yes, he's a black version of an originally white character. So you're catching my drift now as far as tokenization. 
what it actually is and its examples. It doesn't rest upon what you tolerate or like or the exceptions that you make. Tokenization is tokenization. Now you may ask, what is the actual problem with tokenization? Well, for starters, it's lazy. And for different reasons, instead of coming up with a brand new character, you're opting to simply try to copy a previous one in hopes that it sticks. In this day and age, this is inexcusable considering how quickly the word can get around because of the social media and you got these modern marketing tools and considering the vast amounts of work that had to be done the decades upon decades of development when it comes to these certain characters for them to remain staples of american culture just creating a swapped version of that character is especially lazy it goes without saying that some of these changes that happen in live action are among the worst kinds and are always purposeful no casting in Hollywood is done just by simply merit or this idiocy of the best person for the job. The fact that you even see that with animated characters tells you that. So black character development or new black characters are almost non-existent as the studios just continue to hash out tokenized versions of classically white ones. Not to mention most of this is done with blatant political or social agenda in mind. It was at least more understandable when this tokenization happened way back in the gap, like with the Supergirls of the world. But doing it today requires blatant laziness as you're telling the audience that you simply rather not create something new and instead want to cash in on the nostalgia of something that already exists. Many self-proclaimed pro-black activists foam at the mouth and love to see black versions of white things. Tokenization stifles creativity. But not all tokenizations are equal. I've been on record saying that She-Hulk, for example, is the best handled tokenized character when it comes to the big two, at least before up until recently. Batgirl is also far more preferable than most tokenized characters. But nine times out of 10, it's a lousy, needless effort and you end up with goofy stuff like Iceman being turned gay out of nowhere or the criminal depiction of Marvel in the Captain Marvel movie. It's an unfavorable thing. A lot of people make excuses for tokenization. They say, well, they have to do this because nobody will support new characters. This is generally a projection on their behalf because I've never heard a comic guy or gal say that in all of my years of being rooted in this culture. Many of us are fans of many original black characters or female characters, but tokenism continues to be the go-to tactic for things attached to the big two and it's boring. Multiverses are often used as these excuses for such changes and people that refuse to understand that like to utilize it. Folks that go around saying Val Zod and Calvin Ellis aren't tokenized characters and then try to gaslight by acting like you the crazy one and saying things like not every Kryptonian or something has to be black fool. That wasn't even actually the position. Val Zod and Calvin Ellis are literally black supermen. Name branding all of that if they were just some black alien from Valtho Island that went by a completely different name and the power set it wouldn't have been tokenization but that ain't what happened so now you know what tokenism actually is and its application it's not the mere existence of a black female or gay character and yes there is a difference between mere unoriginality and tokenism. The people that are against tokenism are usually the ones that go to bat for these original characters. The ones that support tokenization are usually the ones that Google and become experts on that character overnight when like Jane Foster's Thor gets announced as appearing in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. To be fair, you're the weirdos that they're trying to appeal to. Now, shut up and stop strawmanning the position. Stop trying to shield these lousy creations by claiming misogyny or racism. It's low effort. And we don't really care how trivial you think that it is. Get a grip.